Coming up on Science News Weekly, we've got not-so-faster-than-light neutrinos, Alex the Parrot does math, and the pulse of the Earth. That's up next on Science News Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Science News Weekly with Dr. Kiki, episode number two, recorded on Thursday, February 23rd, 2012. Not so fast. It's February 23rd, 2012, and this is the science that made headlines this week. According to news from CERN, the OPERA collaboration has identified two possible factors that could significantly affect the faster-than-light neutrino result. Both, both are related to GPS timings, the GPS timing system in use, but point in opposite directions. So new experiments are to be expected that will either negate or enrich our our understanding of the FTL neutrino phenomenon. A new paper in the journal Animal Cognition describes the final experiments run on Alex the Parrot before his death in 2007. The studies investigated his math abilities and found that Alex was capable of adding numbers up to a maximum sum of eight and of adding the numbers of objects presented to him sequentially. Known previously for his amazing language skills, This research suggests that Alex might also have been better at math than chimpanzees and other non-human primates. Pretty cool. You might have heard something about the slowly dying Y chromosome at one point or another. Well, gentlemen, you're off the hook. The Y chromosome is probably here to stay. According to a study published in Nature, the Y chromosome will most likely be around millions of years from now, thanks to a genetic sequencing study looking at genes in the Y chromosome. Researchers have created a compound called QAQ, looks a little bit like quack, that can inhibit pain at the flip of a switch. The molecule has two functional parts connected by a light-sensitive bridge. One part resembles lidocaine and can interact with ion channels to change nerve sensitivity. So far, it has only been confirmed to work in animals, but the researchers hope to find ways to apply it to humans. Circadian rhythms were definitively linked to cardiac arrest by researchers at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. The study links a lack a lack of a novel genetic factor called Krupple-like factor 15, or KLF15, to a loss of electrical activity to the heart, which can lead to sudden cardiac death due to arrhythmia. Data from the multi-angle imaging spectroradiometer on NASA's Terra satellite indicates that clouds are getting lower. In fact, from 2000 to 2010, average global cloud height changed by 30 to 40 meters, mainly a result of fewer higher altitude clouds. So really, they're just getting lower. However, it is still unknown what effect, if any, this is going to have on global warming and climate change. Michael Houghton of the University of Alberta, who discovered hepatitis C, announced that he had created a, he has created a vaccine that is effective against all strains of the virus in the lab. The vaccine still needs to successfully pass all clinical trials before becoming available for human use, which, if all goes well, could be in about seven years. And time is of the essence, as Hep C now kills more U.S. citizens than HIV. A team of scientists described a process that might be called a pulse of the Earth in the Journal of Geology. They showed that strontium-87 records increased in marine fossils with the same periodicity as massive marine extinction events that occur every 60 million years. They suggest that a process called continental uplift or tectonic uplift occurs increasing continental elevation and decreasing sea levels enough to make coastal living difficult for marine organisms, which would lead to the massive die-offs. 
And that does it for the science headlines this week. Let me know what you think about these science news stories or tell me what you think should be news by emailing drkiki at drkiki.tv. Or you can leave me a voicemail at 650-741-5454. To watch the full episode of Dr. Kiki's Science Hour, head over to twit.tv slash kiki. Thanks for watching.